everyone, welcome to Lola's Frugal Life. This is episode number 159. Today we're gonna be talking about decluttering. So please stick around for a few quick words from our sponsor and we'll get right into the show. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. If there is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it's professional counseling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available which may not be available to you locally. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Lola, that's Better H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Lola's Frugal Life listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Lola. Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about decluttering. But before we get into that topic, I just real quick want to do my frugal tip of the week, which is something I share um, each time that I do a non-frugal topic, which is usually every other week. So this week's frugal tip of the week is really to just create your grocery list um, by first coming up with a plan for the meals that you would like to make for the week. Um, And when you make that plan and you make your list of what you need for those meals, make sure to check your fridge, your freezer, your pantry um, before you go shopping to make sure to check what you already have on hand because it's the worst thing when you go to the store, buy two cans of corn, come home to put them away and find out you already had three cans in the cabinet. So by planning your meals, you'll only be purchasing the groceries that you'll actually have a plan to use and that can have a really big impact on the amount of money you spend and on the amount of food that potentially gets wasted because it doesn't end up getting put into a meal and getting used in time. So that's my frugal tip of the week. Make sure to um, have a meal plan and purchase your groceries based on that meal plan so that you save money on groceries. So um, decluttering. So the reason um, why I thought about talking about this is it's something I like to talk about anyway, but why it was currently on my mind is because my daughter and I just did a small decluttering um, project in her bedroom. And it made such a huge impact, um, I was really motivated to talk about this topic again. So what we had done is we set an hour uh, timer, and we had a set time. You know, she, she she's a teenager, of course she wasn't thrilled about doing this um, project, but, you know, we agreed, she agreed, we would do one hour, and um, I went, I had a set time, I was like, okay, we're gonna, what time do you want to do this? And she decided 1.30, so we went in there, I had a timer set at 1.30, we went in there, I set a timer for an hour, I had um, a garbage bag and a donate bag, and um, we went through, um, I said, okay, where where do you wanna start? And she picked a spot, and we went through this spot. And she, it was mostly all like clothes and garbage, mostly, because typical teenager room, clean clothes mixed with dirty clothes, wrappers, whatever else, bowls, um, utensils that shouldn't be in there because they're not allowed to eat in the room, but either way, I promised that I would not um, yell because usually when I see some things in there that shouldn't be in there, I get really mad and I start yelling at her. I said, there will be no yelling. We will just go in there. I will take the bag. If I see a bowl, I'll put it out and bring it into the kitchen. Um, Any garbage, just hand it to me, goes in the garbage bag. Any clothes you don't want anymore, hand it to me. They go into the donate bag. And um, we set the timer. And when we were done, we actually didn't even finish the full hour. Um, because what happened was we did two spots and then once she finished the second spot, she was like, this isn't fair. Why do we have to do another spot? If we finished, you know, the two spots I picked early, why do we have to keep going? Um, so of course I wanted to go and finish the hour, but, um, we wound up agreeing that if we cleaned up her Christmas stuff, cause she still had Christmas stuff in there. Um, the rest of our house has since been put away for a while, but the kids wanted to keep their stuff in there longer. So we agreed that if she finished, Um, if we packed up all that Christmas stuff, that we could be done. So by doing the two areas in her room that she picked, plus the Christmas stuff, we were still done within an hour. But it made such a huge impact in her room. 
um, just for that short amount of time that um, it really like kind of motivated me to share that um, with you guys and just kind of maybe talk about decluttering for a little bit. Because even if you're able to take just a small amount of time um, to declutter, it just really can make life easier by um, freeing up space and giving you less, less stuff to manage and less stuff to store. And um, it just really gives you more time to spend thing on the things, spend time on the things that you really love and not just all this other stuff. So, um, you know, to get started, I, I think sometimes we probably struggle with just getting started on decluttering because it can just seem overwhelming. Um, even if you don't have a huge amount of stuff to declutter, just the process, like just thinking like, where should I start? Um, you know, there's so many different areas in your home that you could want to work on and it could just kind of be overwhelming. Um, but I think the, the most important thing is to really don't let perfectionism hold you back from getting started. If you feel like you have a lot that needs to be decluttered and you don't have the time to get it all done, which most of us don't. I mean, most of us have projects that could be decluttered, like areas that could be decluttered all the time because you're always getting new things um, and you're not going to keep it perfectly um, decluttered at all times. So it can kind of feel overwhelming that you're not going to be able to get it all done um, or, or get everything done exactly how you want it. Try not to think of it in that way because when you think about it in the perfect way and having your home perfectly decluttered, that's not realistic and you're not going to wind up getting stuff done because you're going to end up procrastinating because that's there's no way that's even going to happen. Try and remind yourself, even if you declutter one drawer in the kitchen, you made progress. Don't focus like on that big picture. Just focus on the small decluttering project because those small projects over the course of time can have a really big impact on your home. So it's important to, to think about that and to set realistic expectations of what you can get done um, in, a, in the amount of time that you have. Like if you have maybe um, a half an hour free on the weekend, like figure out like what can I realistically get done, including the pulling apart stuff time and the putting things back time. You have to make sure that you keep that in mind also. That's probably the most important part, but just set realistic expectations. and. Um, Try and know like where you're gonna donate to before you get started. That way you can take it there right away. And if you can, um, try to find a place that isn't very particular about what they take. Um, I don't mean quality wise, but like the types of items. You know, some places um, don't like to take like stuffed animals or whatever. If it's like one thing they don't take or whatever, you know, that's fine. But you wanna try and find somewhere that takes the majority of items. That way you don't have to put a lot of thought an effort into where it's going. You could just put everything together and go drop it off when you're done or drop it off the next morning or whatever. So um, just try and keep that in mind before you get started. Um, so some ideas, some like tips on how to figure out where to start. Um, one way um, is to make a list of the rooms that are in your home that you'd like to do decluttering uh, in and then order them by priority to decide where you wanna do your first project. If any of those rooms in and of themselves feel overwhelming, then make a second list um, within each room and prioritize that list. Like maybe if you wanna work on the kitchen, maybe you wanna make another list within the kitchen, like you know, cups, bowls, um, food, whatever. Um, just a smaller list to kind of drill down to figure out the smaller projects within that room. Because um, again, you don't want to say, okay, today I'm going to declutter the kitchen if you have only a half hour to work with. So you want to narrow it down to more manageable little decluttering projects within that. Um, another way to do it is to make a list by item type. Um, maybe clothes, photos, decorations, things like that, and then prioritize that list of what you want to work on first. Again, you can further drill that down to get down to smaller projects like clothes. You might need to declutter your closet, your, your dressers. Um, you might need to declutter clothes that you have up in your attic, like seasonal clothes or whatever for you store your seasonal clothes, or maybe you have them all in a closet if you have a huge space you know, to store your clothes. Um, so break it down, um, or maybe you even just want to do like by type of clothes, like pants, shirts, socks, whatever. Break it down into little manageable pieces so that you could say, okay, yeah, I can go through the socks today and see what ones I can get rid of. Um, it's all about drilling down to the level that makes it more manageable. 
Um, so another idea, if you, as far as trying to figure out where to get started, if you don't like the list idea, um, I read this tip and I thought it was a really great idea. So the idea was that if you can't seem to get yourself moving on a decluttering project and figuring out where to start, the tip was to start in the bathroom. And the reason that they suggested that is because the bathroom's fairly small, um, there's not many sentimental items in there, and you'll likely have a big win because you'll probably find some maybe expired medicines that get, can get thrown out. You might have like some shampoo bottles that could be consolidated. You might have like, I don't know, like a lotion that you don't use anymore that you can toss out, whatever. You're likely to have some quick wins in there, and you can make a pretty nice impact in there by getting rid of that stuff and, and sorting through and organizing it. And that can give you motivation to keep moving. It's it's a nice one that's going to just kind of get you something accomplished. And then, you know, just without having any of those like um, difficult decisions on, you know, more sentimental items. So I thought that was a really great idea. But those are just some tips on kind of how to get yourself started or kind of where to start. Um, so some, some things on some tips about um, make, helping you make decisions on what to get rid of. So one of the top tips really is to, which I think a lot of us struggle with, is don't let the price that you paid for something hold you back on getting rid of it. If you don't love something and you don't use it, there's no reason to keep it um, due to the cost. The money that was spent on it is already spent. It's not going to be um, refunded if you decide to, uh, to get rid of it. But oh well, like there's nothing you can do about that. It's already spent. And if you're hanging on to something just because of the cost and it's not something that you really love, it's going to make you feel bad every time you see it about the amount of money that you spent on it and knowing that you don't ever use it. So really try and keep the cost um, out of your mind. Now, of course, if something's really valuable and you can sell it, you're going to acknowledge that. Um, it's more just about the decision on whether you are going to keep it or not don't let the price come into mind. Once you decide you're going to get rid of it, then yes, you could say, okay, is this worth money? Um, do I want to sell it? If you're the type of person that's going to sell it. I'm not really the type of person that's going to sell something just because I don't want to, I just don't want to deal with the process. I don't want to deal with trying to figure out where to list it, how much to sell it for, um, people contacting me about wanting to buy it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's just not my thing. I'm not into like doing that. So to me, I know I'm not going to do it, so I'm just going to donate it. Um, but if you know you're the type of person that will sell it, make sure you sell it and make sure you do it um, as quickly as possible. Because if you don't do it quickly, it's going to sit in your home and remain clutter. And the longer it sits there, the more likely you are to forget that you were going to sell it. Or that it's going to make you feel bad because you're going to be looking at it saying, oh, I'm really supposed to sell that. I really need to get on that. I really need to do that. So you don't want to put yourself in that situation. Um, another uh, tip for getting rid of stuff is if you have duplicates, I think that makes it pretty easy. Um, but sometimes you might have two duplicates that you really like and you might, but, but do you really need two of them? If it's something that you really don't need two of um, and you have duplicates, just really look at them and, and pick the one you love best and then donate the other one and let someone else have that item to use. The only types of things I keep duplicates, I mean, not the only types of things, but there are certain things I keep duplicates on, but I keep them in different locations. Um, like, for example, stick lighters. We have a couple of those. Um, we keep one in our family room because we have a wood-burning stove in there, and it's convenient to have it right there to grab to light a fire. And then I also keep one in my kitchen drawer because um, we have a, wood, uh, a gas stove, and every once in a while, like, the clicker thing won't light the stove, so I grab the stick lighter and light it. Um, and those are disposable anyway, so it's probably not the best example. But the point is just, like, cleaning products is another, um, again, that's disposable. But um, I keep cleaning products in the areas that I use them. So if I'm cleaning the basement and the bathroom, and I don't have to run upstairs and get cleaning products. So certain things, it makes sense to have duplicates. Um, but a, little, a lot of things, it doesn't. So if you have duplicates of things, just try and really think about what are the ones that are most um, important to you and that you use the most, and then just donate the others. Uh, another tip is really important, and try not to keep things that you don't use. Um, even if it was a gift from someone, even if you spent a lot of money on it or you got a great deal on it, um, whatever the reason, if you when you have things, when you keep things around that you don't use um, and you know you're not going to use them, 
it can make you feel guilty about it every time you see them. Um, you know, every time you see that item, you might think like, oh, I, I know I really should use that or, oh, I feel bad. Someone gave that to me and I never use it or I really should wear that, but it's kind of uncomfortable, but I got such a great deal on it or, oh, my friend thought I would really like that. Um, don't, don't let that, um, don't let that continue. It's, it, those feelings are not going to go away. Um, the longer you keep the item, once you get rid of the item, those feelings will go away because you're going to forget about it over time. But if, if you don't love something and you don't use it, it's just going to make you feel bad about it long term every time you see it. So just donate them and let someone else get use out of it. Um, an- another tip is ask yourself, if you didn't have this item, would you go out and buy it now? If it's not something that you'd be re- willing to go out and repurchase, if it's something that's still available, you have to make believe it's something that you could still go out and purchase. But if it's not something that you'd be willing to go out and repurchase, then maybe it's not something that's really that valuable to you. So just kind of maybe put that question um, when you're looking at something and say, if I didn't have this, would I go out and buy it? Um, And that can maybe help you decide if you want to get rid of something. Um, Another tip is to um, decide if something could be put to better use. Like say you're going through and you're decluttering and you find something that you really love, um, but you're not displaying it, you're not really doing anything, it's just kind of tucked away in some corner and never seen. Try and figure out if there's a better way you could use it. Um, You know, maybe if you have something that's a decoration, maybe you could put it in a more prominent space in your home so you could see it. Or like um, one example I have, and this is, uh, I I talked about this on, um, I did an episode on spending out, like using the things that you have, but this totally relates to to decluttering. So I was doing a decluttering project and I um, had this bin in my basement shoved in a corner and I honestly didn't even know it was in it. Um, I opened it up and it was all this stuff from my, from my wedding. There was like these stuffed teddy bears and a cake topper that I had made with uh, like cherished teddy figurines and um, just like all this stuff, a, a cake server, um, champagne glasses, everything. So I, I was like, oh my gosh, like we kept all this stuff and we just have it like in this bin shoved in the corner of the basement that no one even knows what's even in this stuff. Like why did we even keep it if we're just going to keep it stored like this? So I went through it. There were some things I was able to just toss that like really weren't sentimental at all and had just kind of gotten old looking over time and just not even really nice anymore. Like those, like I, there was like this like little white purse, but it was like, I didn't even remember having it and the color had faded and it just looked ugly and I just threw it out. So some, some things I did get rid of, but like the teddy bears, the cake topper, like I kept all that stuff and we went up putting up a little shelf in my bedroom and we put it all on display. So now I could see all this stuff. It's not shoved in a basement. It's, it's cute. Like I love it. And, um, it made such better use of it. And then even like the cake server, um, I had when I, I had just hot glued some white flowers to it for the wedding. It was just a regular cake server. You would just pick up wherever. Um, so I just tore the flowers off of it and I washed it, and we use it now, like, for everyday use. It's in our kitchen drawer, and it's kind of neat because I know it was from the wedding, Um, but we're just using it. So maybe when you're going through some things, if you do find something that you really love, but you're not really using it, try and think maybe if there's a way that you can, um, you know, use it in a different way or display it or whatever so that you're actually um, getting the enjoyment out of it rather than just kind of having it tucked away somewhere. So um, another tip is that, you know, try and keep your focus on those things that you're keeping. Now, of course, you have to make decisions on the things that you're going to get rid of. But if you can try and spend more time thinking about that, you're keeping these items and you're going to have so much more space to take care of them by getting rid of some things, it can really kind of um, help relieve some of that anxiety about getting rid of stuff. And it can really kind of Um, give you like a boost in your mood by like acknowledging those things that you're keeping um, that you really love and use so you're going to be able to have more space for them or more easily put them away Um, you know like for clothes for example when you get rid of some clothes you don't wear the clothes that you do love you can easily put them in the drawer take them out of the drawer everything fits nicely you're not shoving things in there so really kind of try and focus on that you will be able to um, care more for the things that you love by getting rid of some of these other things. So that's just like some, those are just kind of like some tips on just trying to think about how to decide what to get rid of. And then I just have like some other um, just kind of random tips. 
um, you know, related to decluttering. They're not really specifically on like where to start or, or, you know, what to get rid of, making decisions, that type of thing. But, um, you know, one of the most important things, I think with everything, not just decluttering, in like kind of every aspect of your life, you can apply this, but don't take on a project that is bigger than you can do in the amount of time you have. Don't feel like you have to make these huge accomplishments. Um, try and break it down to smaller projects because then you can realistically accomplish it. Um, you can finish it. You feel good about it. Even if it's a small project, you got it done. It's going to motivate you to keep going. You don't want to end up with a huge pile of stuff sitting there in the middle of your living room because you decided to like empty out your entire closet and you don't have time now to finish it. So just try and focus on smaller manageable projects. And when you're deciding how much time you have to work on a decluttering project, be realistic about the amount of time. Um, And remember that even if you have a ton of energy now, if you're like, I'm going to work on this for five hours, that energy is going to fade over a period of time once you start um, going through stuff. Decluttering is, um, it's it's tiring. Um, It's mentally tiring. It's physically tiring. So be realistic about how much time you really have to devote for this project and make your, um, like pick a project that fits within that time. And also make sure you account for interruptions that might happen during the day. You know, you might have to stop and eat lunch. You might need to help a kid with something. You might have to go drive someone somewhere. Who knows what might happen, but just take into account some time for for possible interruptions too. Um, And then another thing is to just um, see if you could maybe do some tiny, like literally very tiny, tiny decluttering projects when you can. Like if you're having trouble just finding time right now in your schedule to do any, maybe you're just, sometimes we go through those periods of life where we're literally so busy that we don't even feel like we have a half an hour. Or if we do have a half an hour, maybe we want to rest for that half hour because the rest of the day has been extremely busy. If you're just not finding the time right now to devote a half an hour or an hour to decluttering, maybe see if you could do some tiny, tiny decluttering projects throughout your day, which might be when you go to make a coffee and you look at the mugs, maybe when you grab that coffee mug, you take a look, do you see one or two that maybe you don't really use anymore? Grab them and put them in a box to donate. Um, Are you going to grab a book to read off the bookshelf? When you grab that book, take a look around, are there any books on there? Maybe pick two and stick them in a box to donate. Um, When you're getting your socks out of the drawer, um, are there any that you know you always bypass because you just don't like them anymore or you just never did like them and you're not gonna wear them? Take them out, stick them in a box to donate. All of those little tiny, tiny decluttering, they're not really, we don't really call them like a project, but think of it as a project. It's a little tiny, tiny project. And um, every time you can do that, you're still making projects, um, projects, hello, you're making progress, even though it's small, those are gonna make a difference over time. So just try and see if maybe you could squeeze that in here and there. Um, And then, you know, sometimes, something just to think about sometimes um you might have a box of things that you think is going to be really difficult to go through and it's going to be really sentimental and it might not necessarily be the case when you actually go to do it um there might be a lot uh, of things that you can much more easily get rid of than you expected for example i had two huge bins of papers from my kids um from school over the years from my three i have three kids and i had these two big huge boxes And um, I said, you know what, I'm going to go through this and I'm going to sort it out and I'm going to take photos of the things that I really love and I'm just going to toss them um, so that we could still have an image of whatever it was, a drawing or a story or whatever. Um, I didn't actually even wind up getting that far because, number one, it was just too much. I mean, two boxes of stuff, there's no way I was going to go through all of that and take pictures and everything else. So that wasn't a realistic expectation. Um... But what I did do is I wound up eliminating one of those entire boxes and I got all this stuff down to one box. So what happened was as I was going through it, I found that I had so many duplicates of the same type of thing, like a child writing the letter A on, you know, on the lines. Like, I mean, I didn't need um, an example from every day of the week for one kid of writing the letter A. I mean, I'm not even exaggerating. I had so many things like that. I had papers that just had like, it was just like a worksheet and maybe the kids drew like a crayon scribble across the page. 
I mean, I had so many things that I was so easily just able to toss right in the trash. And um, I emptied out an entire bin's worth of stuff of just super easy garbage. Um, so just I just wanted to point that out, that sometimes you might think something's going to be um, really sentimental and difficult to go through, and it might really might, might not wind up being that way. Um, there might be a lot, a lot of things in there that are a lot easier to get rid of than you think there will be. So um, that's kind of all the decluttering tips that I have for today. I did want to point out one thing, though. I, I wanted to mention this. I almost forgot. Um, this isn't, I don't know, I think it could be considered decluttering, but something I did the other day um, was decluttering my freezer. So you wouldn't typically think of like food as like decluttering, but I thought I might want to mention this just in case this could help any of anybody out there. Um, so my freezer upstairs, like our main fridge, the, the freezer in that fridge is where we keep, um, just like, I don't know, things like frozen vegetables, frozen cheese, um, I don't know, like popcorn, chicken, whatever, just kind of random things like that. Not really like meat that I'm going to make for dinners. I keep those in a chest freezer downstairs. But anyway, things like that. And this freezer had just gotten jam packed. Like every time I came home from grocery shopping, it was stressing me out because I knew I wasn't going to be able to fit things in the freezer that people of my in my family asked me to buy for them. And I was thinking like, how much stuff could possibly be in here? Everyone's asking me to buy things. Um, so why is there so much stuff in here still? And every time I'd open it, it was hard to get things in and out. And then once I put more things in, it was so jammed that nobody could even see what was underneath it. Um, and it was just really bothering me. So I wound up decluttering that freezer and decluttering the food. I opened it up. I went through everything. I found that there was bags that could be consolidated. Like I had three separate half used bags of popcorn shrimp. Um, all the same brand, just someone didn't know that there was another bag in there. So they opened a new one. So I um, I combined all those together and it made it a lot nicer, but there was still too much food in there. So what I wound up doing is all of the food that I found was just kind of shoved to the back that no one was using. It wasn't stuff that people wouldn't eat in my family. It was just more the type of thing that they're not going to be inclined to just go make on their own. So um, I have a reminder on my phone now for the last few weeks and at lunchtime, it reminds me to use up some stuff from the freezer. So that's what I started doing. So like I started grabbing those items that pe- nobody's really making and I would just cook it up and they're getting eaten because, you know, if you make food and you just leave it out, people are going to come by and eat it. So by doing that, just the last couple weekends, my freezer has thinned out so much. It's so much easier to put things in there now um, when I come back from grocery shopping. So it's had a really huge impact and... Um, made it a lot less stressful every time I opened that freezer. So I just wanted to share that. Um, That's all I have for today. Sorry, this is a much longer episode than usual, but I wound up talking a lot about decluttering, I guess. So um, don't forget, um, if you'd like to reach out to me for any reason with um, any feedback or topic suggestions or anything like that, you can reach me at facebook.com slash Lola's Frugal Life. You can send me a message through there, post a comment on the page. Um, I also have a private listeners group with a bunch of nice people in there. Um, You can join that group at facebook.com slash groups slash Lola's Frugal Life. Just submit a request to join. I check it pretty much every day, so I'll admit you to the group as soon as I see it. Um, Don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you listen to if you like this show. And if you would be kind enough to leave a uh, positive rating on whatever um, you listen to on, that would be much appreciated. So um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a really awesome day.